In this lecture, you're going to learn that how you can perform search on your list control. And we will be using the UI search bar, which is part of the UI kit control. And we will be exposing it using UI view representable in our surf UI application. So the first thing we need to do is to populate our list control. So we need some sort of a data. I already have created an array of names. So we're just going to use that array of names to populate a list control. Currently we have a text control, so I'm just going to remove the text control and replace it with list. And I can run a for each loop self.names, which is an array ID. And in this case, each of the item will be identified as self name in and then we can use a text control to display the name let's go ahead and press on the resume so that we'll be able to see a list of all the names great now in ui kit we already have a control called ui search bar control we can not really use it inside the swift ui unless we expose it as a ui view representable so what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and add a new file. So let's go ahead and add a new file. And it will be a Swift file. And we will call that a search bar. We can obviously call this anything you want, but to, to just keep it simple, we just call it, call it search bar. There we go. Now I'm going to import Swift UI. And I'm going to create a structure which will be called search bar, which will be using UI view representable. This means that this particular control that we are going to expose, it will be representing a particular UI view control, and which in this case will be search bar control, which is part of the UI kit. There are a couple of functions that you must implement. The first one is make coordinator, which we will cover later on. The other one is make UI view, which will be responsible for giving you the search bar. So let's go ahead and change the return type. And we are simply going to return the UI search bar, which is part of the UI kit control or the UI kit framework. Over here, we will create a search bar, which will be UI search bar. And we can simply pass in a frame, which in this case can be zero. That's fine. We're going to search bar delegate. We will set this up to context.coordinator. We still have to create the coordinator. And then finally go ahead and return the search bar instance. Now let's go ahead and jump into creating our coordinator. So I'm going to go ahead and create a class and I will call it coordinator. Coordinator will be using the NS object as well as a UI search bar delegate because this coordinator will be coordinating the surf view and the UI kit UI search bar view. In this coordinator, if you want to initialize this coordinator, you will need to pass in a particular text. This will be the text that we'll be typing in a text box or a search bar in this case. So we need to initialize it with that particular text. So let's go ahead and say text, and we will call it binding of string, and assign the text over here using the text property, which is a private property. So whatever we are declaring over here as a bindable, we can use the underscore with this to get the private property that we can assign. Now the whole point of doing this is that we are going to be using or sending the text over here, which will be the person will be writing something in the text box and we will get that text and then we will perform some action on it. But the question is that, how did we get the updated text? So for that, we're going to use the did change or text did change event, which is part of the UI search bar delegate. This is going to give us the search text, as you can see, which is the second argument. We already have a text property, so we can actually simply assign text equals to 
search text. So as soon as the person starts writing something in the search bar, we are going to get that information, the updated text, the search term, by firing the text did change event, which fires automatically. Now actually we can go back to our UI view representable and also create a binding property var text, which is of type string. Now inside the make coordinator, we can actually return the coordinator that we just created. So return the coordinator. And in order to create the coordinator, we have to pass in the text, which means that we can actually pass in the text since it's bindable. We're simply going to pass in a bindable expression to the coordinator, which is going to initialize that particular coordinator. There is one other function that we need to overwrite or provide implementation, which is update UI view. In the update UI view, we are going to get access to the text. And what we want to do is, since our view is a UI search bar, we will simply assign the text property to the text. So, so that it keeps on updating or it keeps in sync with what the person is actually doing. So this is it. This is basically exposing the UI search bar control, which is part of the UI kit and making it available in our Swift UI control or Swift UI screens. Let's go ahead and jump into our content view and start using the search bar control. Since we're using a for each over here inside the list, we have the opportunity to create any control over here. So on the top of it, so search bar. And for the search bar, we need to pass in something over here. So we're going to pass in something called a search term, which will be the state that we need to create. So let's go over here at the top. And I'm going to go ahead and create a state, which will be a private var search term, which will be a string, and we will initialize it to nothing. Let's go ahead and run our application. And you'll see that we should be able to see a search bar. Let's go ahead and build it again so that everything compiles fine. And hopefully we'll be able to see the search bar. As you can see, this is great. We can see the search bar. But the search bar is not really going to do anything on its own because the for each is dependent and getting the data from self.names. So we need to make sure that whenever it's getting the data, it's actually filtering it out based on the search term. So how can we do that? Well, we can say self.names.filter and we can pass in a certain filter. If self.search term, if maybe person has entered nothing, is actually empty, if it is empty, then we can return something. So in this case, we'll simply return true, meaning select everything. Or else we will do a localized case insensitive search, and we are going to see if it contains the search term. Let me go ahead and close this and then open it again so that we have a little bit option to resize it. There we go. So we're calling the search term or whatever the item that is inside the names dot localize case insensitive search, which basically is saying that we don't really care about the casing. All right. And that's uh, pretty much it, actually. Let's go ahead and build this. Let's go ahead and resume it. And let's see if we can actually start searching for something in our screen. So the only thing that we can search are all obviously the records that we already have. So this will be the names, Azam, Jake, Alex, and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and press over here and I'm gonna search for something. You can see that as soon as I type in JA, it is actually giving me all of that results. Now, if I say J-E, it immediately goes on to give me Jerry. If I say M-A, it's going to give me that. If I say S, 
it's not going to give me anything because there's nothing starting with S. So you can see that it's working perfectly fine. And since we're doing a localized case insensitive search, I can actually type in capital letters and it's still working fine. All right. So this is how you will create a or expose the UI search bar as a Swift UI view and then use it in your application to filter out and perform search on the list. And you can see that the filtering is kind of live. It's taking effect as, as, uh, as soon as you start typing into the UI search bar. If you like this video and want to support my channel and want to learn more about Swift UI, then check out my Udemy course, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. This is nine and a half hour of on-demand content and I'm actually uploading some new stuff. So it will be more than 10 to 11 hours of content by the time you see it. And it has a lot of sections that you can see. We're starting from the very beginning of creating and combining views, jumping into lists and navigation. And this also has sections about MVVM design pattern and how you can use MVVM design pattern to create different applications like weather application, news application, and so on. After that, in the end, we dive into core data and integration of core data with our Swift UI applications. We also cover core ML, which is machine learning, uh, with Swift UI integration. This is the complete course of learning about Swift UI, and this is the future direction of uh, Apple's new roadmap as we move forward of creating uh, applications for different interfaces for Apple devices. Now, the best way to get this course is there is a link in the description of the YouTube video. Simply click on that link and you'll be taken to a page that will give you the best possible deal. Now, I really encourage you to use the link that I'm providing you, the coupon links that I'm providing you, because if you use those links, I will get the much higher revenue for the cut from the payment that you will do, and you will get the best possible deal. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and supporting my Udemy courses. Check out my other courses also if you're interested. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much.